What's up guys, Javier from That Racing Channel. We have a super special episode for you today. Today we're gonna give you an in-depth look at Dan's 1100 horsepower Mitsubishi Evolution. Going 60 to 130 miles an hour in just 3.5 seconds. To give you guys a little perspective, the Bugatti Chiron does that anywhere from 4.8 to 5 seconds. That tells us one thing, this thing is stupid fast. And I'm even more excited today because I've known Dan about 10 years. And one thing I'll tell you about Dan is that dude can drive. Appreciate that, Sam. I know we're in for a wild ride today. Let's check it out. What's up, Dan the man? What's up? Good to see you, brother. How are you? Go ahead and fire up. I am so freaking ready for this. This thing sounds insane. Go ahead and rev up a little bit. God damn, that sounds so good. That's 4G63 heaven right there. like 1,050, I think on 50 pounds. So it should be making 1,100 or a good bit over 1,100. So, so freaking ready for this. Let's go for a ride. Today's about 1,000 degrees out. So it's open down pipe right now, right? Okay. Probably forever. <laughs> it's for all the boosts, so that's all that matters. That's it. The other day I forgot to uh, pull my Hoi Trans shifter out. Oh, shit.
2003 Mitsubishi Evolution. It is a AG Autosports built top to bottom custom 2.2 liter. It utilizes a Cali's crank, GRP aluminum rods, Wiseco custom pistons, built in-house by Anthony the man, the myth, the legend. It uh, is a full wet block, there is no fill. It is a stock Mitsubishi off the shelf Evo 9 head gasket, nothing special, no fire rings, no O-rings, none of that. Car sees about 55, 56 pounds and touches and forth. It is on a Zona XR 9569S, shout out to Robert. Technically it's a 67, but it is a 67.9. Turbine side is a 69. Turbo works really well. It's a uh, tile back housing, small. You see it is very tiny. No nitrous on the car, it comes on very quick. The power band is very broad. It basically never drops below a thousand anywhere in, in the power band right, when I'm in the pull. The car utilizes a ETS exhaust manifold, uh, V-band, small V-band, two 38 millimeter tile wastegates. The car actually came with that setup and I just used it. Basically the only part I've used with this car from the previous owner. The car has a custom AG spec IGN1A uh, ignition system. Uh, works really well. Probably one of the strongest ignition systems on the market right now. Skunk 2 intake manifold, Skunk 2 throttle body, really nothing crazy on that side. It has a Garrett core, four inch intercooler. When we first put the car together, we put it on the dyno over at AG, Chris Speed tuned. It made 1044 at 50 pounds. <laughs> Has a Liberty dog box, not the face plated stuff, because the face plated stuff I did break a couple years ago in a buddy's car. Sorry, George. It is on a Haltech Elite 2500 flex fuel. Like I said, it does run on pump E85. It is on Injector Dynamics new injector, the 2600s, just four. I didn't want to go eight just because it's more problematic. There's more seals that can go wrong. There's just more stuff to worry about, basically. The car has a Aeromotive brushless fuel pump on lower boost, like on wastegate or wastegate. It was like 27 pounds, it made 750. It made 1044 at 50 pounds. Right now we have it at 55, 56. What is it really making at that? I'm not sure. We never really test fourth gear on the dyno. It's always in third, you know, just to keep the speed of the drums down and just a little safer in the dyno room. The car moves itself well because how broad the power band is. You know, it is a 2.2 liter and AG just started basically experimenting with the 2.2s and so far I really like it, knock on wood. From 55 to, to 95, it's at a thousand plus everywhere. You know, so it's like I could step on it through the whole pull and it's a thousand plus when a lot of cars are like falling with every shift and this, this, as you can hear in the video, it just, it lights up very quickly. And that's basically the, the car's saving grace is why it can race a quicker car. It's a, it's a very much of a sprinter. Basically low red on steroids. So what are you revving it to? Um, anywhere from 9 to 95 is where I'd like to shift it at. But nice. I don't really look, so whatever it is, it is. It's all by feeling, by sound. You're one with the 4G? You just can't look. You know what I mean? <laughs> it all does go by so fast. I mean, if you're looking, it's kind of too late. Oh yeah. I mean, if I had a big fucking light, like, pfft, hit me in the face, sure, but I don't. What, uh, what can it, what's it capable of revving to? I could rev it to 10 if I wanted, being a little bit of rod and all. But, uh, but just to keep it safer, rev it to 95, 95 is like the sweet spot. Yeah. Massive 
turbos on these little, you know, two liter or two two. Don't get me wrong, they trap high and, and they make a lot of power up top. But for a street car, it is like, it is just, the power band is almost unusable on the street. To me, that's my favorite thing about this car is, you know, you can just punch in at four grand and this thing pins you to the seat. So it's been what? About 10 years since I think we first met? Yeah. A little red Evo, which we'll plug some clips of. That car is infamous. It's been around and Dan's drove the piss of that thing. ridiculously fast. I know it was gonna feel fast and I've been in a lot of different cars, but the all around experience in this car is just not like anything else. It is instant and just keeps on pulling. And with Dan driving, he, he's an animal. So it just heightens the experience. Outside of like some stupid fast 2000 horsepower Lambos and GTRs, this is likely the quickest street car I've ever been in. Shout out to Rich Auto Works. Always helped me out with fabrication. Shout out to Brian. He did the uh, custom radiator setup on this car. It stays cold. I could let it idle out here for hours and it just stays peg cold. For a half size radiator, it's really well. 15 inch, 15 by eight Volk T37s with MNH 245, 55, 15 uh, drag radials. Might have to step up to a Mickey <laughs> after this video. It has small brakes in the front just to clear the 15s. It does have all factory axles, stock T case. It has a wave track LSD in it. So the car is not full weight, but no Evo really is. It does have full interior, as you see. All the seats are in it, never take them out. Um, all the seat belts. I wanted it that way so I can put my daughter in the back if I wanted to cruise. I mean, we just drove 70 miles. But yeah, I mean, the car has driven three hours round trip, raced the car, drove it back. You know, like it's proved itself, doesn't overheat, nothing really, just it's a good driver. The Recaros that I have in the car are the RSG, they're the Japan side of Recaro. Um, they weigh 18 pounds with rails and mounts versus the stock 37. So it's like right there, say 40 pounds of, you know, dead weight in the car. And it still looks like a normal car. It's the little things like that. It does have an aluminum drive shaft. It does have like the, the billet diff mounts and the north-south bar and 
stuff like that. The car is an eight, but from the outside, you wouldn't be able to tell. It looks very much like a nine. I did the nine bumper, all the thrill pieces, uh, nine headlights, nine tail lights, JDM back bumper, SC lip. It just has everything that a nine has, even in the interior side. You know, Mitsubishi still has a lot of parts available from the, from the uh, parts counter, the center console, you know, all these little pieces that it, if they're available, why not? They're literally 50 bucks or whatever. It's like little things, but it, it makes everything look so much nicer, you know? When I had got the car, it was actually just to kind of like fill a void as that car was being finished. That is the Hell Fox. It is a Hellcat swap. All the guys at AC Car Craft did a phenomenal job. Everything you could do to that car is seven second ready, easily. The goal is make a thousand and change and just drive it. Put the baby in the back if I had to <laughs> and uh, cruise it. It's not really, I'm not trying to be competitive with the car, but just definitely a good looking car. I wanted the sand beige. I actually bought it from, a, well now he's a friend, Enrique out in Texas. I saw it on Instagram. He had like a small block Ford in it and it was just idling. TRC posted it. I was like, hey man, sell me, sell me that car. He's like, nope. And he finally came off it. We met in Alabama or whatever it was and we drove it back and literally didn't even drive the car because I just sent it straight to AC Car Craft and they did a great job, but it will be on the road soon. I first met you guys, TRC, I want to say 10, 12 years ago. I don't even know when it was. Um, I had Lil Red, the red uh, stock motor Evo making 620. I sold that to a friend. That car has gone back and forth between us friends and I kind of want to buy it back, but <laughs> that's another story. The Colt, I had the Colt, the silver Colt. It, uh, I went sevens in it at 186. <laughs> All right, now we got to tell him he there went 8 2. The first one is. Nah, tell him 8 0 2. 8 0 2. Yeah, it's fun. You almost had it. 8 49. 8 49. They're right there. They're right there. 176, though. 8 40 is so fast. Then, come check the time slip. That's on wheel speed. Got some wheels for some wheels? Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Holy fuck! Uh, roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> that was just like ups and downs between braking drivetrain parts and the motor was solid. That never, the head never came off. It was just a good running engine. Just, yeah, the DSM drivetrain was just uh, very finicky. I had to upgrade all the Magnus, you know, gears, and the billet housings for that, but 3000 GT rear end, and then it finally got into the sevens. And then I parted out because it was enough, <laughs> enough torture. So the debut or maiden voyage of the car, I literally topped it off with ethanol and drove it all the way to Palm Beach International from Fort Lauderdale, which is an hour and a half. Roll race the car there, it got rained out, so we only got one qualifier, but it went 176 miles an hour, which was second fastest of the whole event. We weren't expecting this car to be anywhere in that ballpark. You know, you start getting in the 180 territory, it starts to kind of like blow your mind thinking it's such a small turbo. You look at the back housing is like a golf ball size, you know, it's very small. So you would think it would choke up, but the way the turbine's designed, it has a, every other blade is like notched. It's like one, one long, one short, one long. So it basically relieves back pressure easier, allowing the engine to breathe. Special thanks to Anthony at AG Auto Sports, George, Johnny, Jay, Everybody over there is, you know, they've all been my friends for life and they've done a lot for this car and every car that I've had, you know, even Lil Red and the cold, every, everything. Shout out to my girl, Brittany, for tolerating all this, you know. <laughs> Shout out to Chris Speed. Um, he plays a huge role in this. He's always willing to check my logs and make adjustments, you know, whenever. All right, it's official, guys. This is my absolute favorite street car <laughs> in the entire world. This thing is so much fun. When this thing, it, I think we hit in third and started doing it, like it's just fighting so hard for traction. And I think it was hazing them a little bit. It was. I found it at I was like, let me chill out. And that shit is super used to do. Yeah. And that shit making close to 1300. This thing is just getting it, bro. Yeah. Honestly, legit, I know a lot of people remember the TRC Supra. This car would shit 
on the TRC Subaru. <laughs> Turbo Guard. Turbo Guard. Never leave home without it. Nice streetcar, bro. Thanks, bro. We're gonna go shoot some rollers now and 